everyone, Joe Tillman back with part two of my interview with UK reality TV star, Maria Fowler. Now, before we get into that interview, I thought it was important to take a moment to really dive deep into her hairline, and I'll explain to you everything that was wrong with it from A to Z. The first thing that was wrong with Maria's hairline, um, and we're going to use this photo taken by the Maitland Clinic in Portsmouth, UK. Uh, they are the ones that took on her um, her repair case, and um, this is a this is a photo before the Maitland Clinic um, were able to start their procedure. This is right before the second surgery, and when we look at this photo, it's taken in very good light. It's high resolution, so it's a very good quality, showing you the reality of what she had on her forehead. So when we look at this photo, the first thing that jumps out to me is, well, it's it's kind of a close race, but uh, the first thing I'll talk about rather is the low density. Now, uh, if you saw the first interview, she was talking about how she felt like it was a higher density hair transplant. It just looked unnatural. But when we look at this photo, the reality is that it was a fairly low density hair transplant which actually makes it even worse because it makes the other issues stand out just that much more. And one of those problems is the multi-hair graft placement. There are no singles. Um, I, I don't think I counted any singles in the very front of the hairline. Um, when we zoom in on this, you can see that the hairline is riddled with multi-hair grafts. You've got on, not only doubles, but you also have triple hair grafts in this right side of her temple uh, after her first hair transplant. And if you're not sure why that's a bad thing, I'll just tell you right off the bat, it just doesn't look natural because hairlines don't naturally have multi-hair grafts, they have single hair grafts. But for more on that, you can look down in the description, I've got a link to uh, the video that actually led Maria to me. It's called Celebrity Hair Transplant Disasters, The Kyle Christie Effect, and I go into why multi-hair grafts are a bad thing for hairlines. The next thing that's wrong with this hairline, and it is, again, only exasperated by the low density, is the fact you can see the pattern of placement. Now, again, when we zoom in here, we can see rows of graft placement, which is visible um, in her, I, I, I think I saw, but I know that from um, every patient I've seen out of this clinic, KSL, um, the photos right after surgery of any of their patients look identical and that there is a very distinct pattern to the placement. And what we see is that once everything heals, the redness is gone, the grafts grow in, that pattern becomes visible in the final result as well. And the problem with this is that there are no patterns like this found in nature. What you have is a line that goes along the frontal hairline, it's very flat, but then you have another line behind it which is about a full millimeter of space behind it, and then another one behind that, and it just keeps on going throughout the entire field of placement. It's almost like stadium row seating, which is a, a, um, a term that I coined well over 10 years ago in reference to um, unnatural hair transplant placement, where the placement itself looks like the, row, um, the, the rows of seating uh, that you might, might see in, uh, in a football game uh, when you go see it live. Um, it's just obvious right here that this is not a natural hair transplant. And of course I can go into the angles and the direction because these are standing straight up um, right out of the top of her, her forehead at a bad angle. They're supposed to be laying down flatter. They're all supposed to be uniform, uh, growing and flowing in the same direction, and that's simply not happening. So like I said, I wanted to take a moment just to really break down what the problems were with her first hair transplant as far as the aesthetics and what she was dealing with. And she talks a little bit about what it was like to have this for a hairline in part two coming up next. For, for what you've been through, I, I, don't, I don't want you to, to think that uh, you have no right to feel upset or, to, um, or that you have no right to you know, question the quality of the work or how it made you feel. Um, because it's still a very real issue that you dealt with. And it's a very real issue, um, with the, the way that you tried to deal with it. And, um, 
and I, I get it. I, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like this guilt that you have. It's like, Oh, I, you know, I, I shouldn't be complaining, but yeah, you should be complaining. And it's so critical, but yeah. honestly, like when you, when people, and I know it's an issue that affects men a lot more, it's like the sort of, um, receding and things like that. Like I think to live with that as a man or a woman that could have alopecia or whatever, is one thing, but then imagine getting it fixed and it looking like that. Like, yeah. that in a way is worse because at least it looks natural before. And for me, I hadn't lost hadn't lost any hair, but I'd gone from having a hairline that I was ashamed of. I didn't like it. I have had a lot of people commenting on it and, and calling me things, and I'd make a joke of it. But to then live, with to walk into a shop and the shop assistant be staring at your hairline, like, that's the worst thing because you can't hide that. Unless yeah. you pull your hair down. It's, and it didn't sit right because it was growing outwards. So if I pulled my hair down, I'd have like just these like flaps of it was just awful. Yeah. I constantly had like you can see here, like this is the regrowth now. So this is like nine months. Mm-hmm. I'd constantly have these like pinned down to my head. Yeah. So yeah, like you can say like, oh, people have worse, but that's just me being covering my bases because of what people are like on the internet there's always somebody that's going to go oh well but do you know what like it was awful it was horrible yeah. I felt conscious in my relationship with family like meeting new people with work because I knew I looked an idiot and I did and it was just it was a horrible feeling I, I and I understand that feeling because I, I went through you know, a similar issue myself many years ago. That's why I do what I do and, and, uh, you know, why I've got all this information online, which eventually led you to me. But, um, uh, I, I, I want to know, like looking at this photo, like what, what, what does it feel like to know that that was on your head? Just I feel like just, just recently. I think before I had this wrecked, I'm just looking at the picture now. Before I had this rectified, like, I kind of, like, didn't want to let myself get angry about it, and I kind of excused it a lot and stuff like this, but now I know how it should have looked Mm -hmm. and how it looks, what am I, seven, yeah, I'm a week, I'm a week post-op, this looks better already, and my scabs haven't even all come off yet fully. yeah. And and that's it makes me angry. It makes me I feel yeah. angry about it now because I think somebody's done this to me and somebody you know, it's just there's no excuse for it. It's substandard work. Like yeah. it's not acceptable in, in this year, it's not acceptable to be doing that to people. Like it's really not. Yeah. So I feel I do feel a bit angry now. Um I think I've been through the upset and and I was very upset when I had it fixed because I was like, I sat and cried when he fixed it. So, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating. And it's frustrating for me to feel that there's so many people out there that are living living like that, that yeah. haven't had it fixed or haven't got the means to get it fixed. And it, it I'm angry for them as well now. Yeah. So I'm kind of like I'm turning into you. Like I want to like right. I want to. Well, welcome aboard. <laughs> we can always use more help to get the word out. But um, no, that's what you just described is what a lot of people go through, and um, I I completely understand where you're coming from. And I think that you know what you said um, about being one week post op. I think it's a great segue into talking about. Um, you know, what happened after you and I started talking and, um, you know, engaging about your issue. Um, what, and, and this isn't about me, but I, I want this to, I, I want you to explain what it was like to understand. And I, th- I think you told me, I'll just back up a bit. I think you told me earlier that when, when you contacted me, it wasn't so much to, um, to seek help, it was more, uh, more of an issue of confirming your suspicions. Yeah. Because you didn't really know. You just you felt like maybe something was wrong, but you weren't sure. Can you elaborate on that? Okay, so I, I felt like something was wrong with my hair from, like, when I got it done, and I felt that my partner had his done at the same time, and 
I felt that my, obviously my scabbing was very, very heavy. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like this is very minimal. Like you, can, you could, it's barely noticeable. Mm-hmm. So I felt that my scabbing was in a straight line across my head. And there are pictures on the internet. You could have drawn it with a ruler. I felt my partners had like little like drops that came forward, mm-hmm. uh, which were very even. His were, but I felt, well, why is his like that? So I thought, I kind of like thought nothing of it because I thought, well, you know, like I'm in the best hands, which you do. And then I noticed I had a lot of redness, which can be normal, but my redness persisted for about six months. And I felt that it was very straight, but I felt that I told myself and I told other people when I excused it to people, oh, it looks really straight, but it's just because of the redness because it's adding adding more depth under it and once the redness is gone it won't look like that yeah and I waited for the redness to go and then the redness went and it still looked like a straight line and I think that was when I had to sort of admit that this was not good Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah I think did you ask when I realized that it you asked when did no I was asking um uh, to, what was the reason? What, you know, you're you're telling me that the reason you reached out to me was to kind of confirm your own suspicions. And yeah, yeah. Yes, I went off on a tangent. So yeah, I realized that it was a straight line, and then somebody said a comment to me on social media about multiple hair grafts, and now this is the first time I've ever heard that terminology. So I did, I went on Google and went on YouTube and I found you and I found that video and it kind of like started to like put things into place and I watched your video and it just went tick to every box that everything you spoke about basically confirmed to me everything that's wrong with my hair. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to admit, I've got to stop being in denial because as long as I'm in denial, this is not going to get any better. Yeah. I considered like plucking the hairs because I'm mm-hmm. quite handy with like beauty things but I was like but that's a short-term fix yeah and to kind of I need to get this sorted so that was when I reached out to you and I was like help me like what do I do like right. so you t- please I kind of wanted you to tell me that it wasn't right because I knew it wasn't right and it was having someone that's going to tell me that's not trying to then sell me something right so it came in really well so yeah thank you mm-hmm.